Hello, everybody, and welcome to this special interview at the Rangers Review with myself, uh, Derek Clark. And I'm delighted to say we're joined by the City Talking founder, Lee Hicken, to talk about uh, tomorrow's uh, premiere, Rangers 72, an absolutely fantastic film, folks, looking back on the club's greatest achievement winning the European Cup Winners' Cup back in 1972. Uh, Lee, first of all, thanks very much for joining us. Oh no, you're more than welcome. It's um, you know we're we're glad we can actually start to talk about it properly now that the film is uh, premiering tomorrow night. We so you sort of have to keep these things under your hat as much as possible as you're making it. But yeah, we're glad to like sort of spread the word about this now and let people know what we've been up to for the last year or so. Yeah, most definitely. We we're just speaking off air there, and I think I spoke to you a good number of years ago when you produced the. Um, do you want to win film that the Leeds United story about making it back into the uh, into the top flight? Um, you've you've been pretty busy since then, haven't you? That everyone knows about that tremendous Leeds United uh, uh, series that you produced. If for people maybe a bit unfamiliar with, with the work that you guys do, can you give us a little bit of background about yourself and and the group? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so the the studio is the City Talking, and um, yeah, as you say, we. Our first sort of foray into the sports film market um, was the Leeds United film, the story of sort of Howard Wilkinson taking the team from the second division through to, uh, you know, basically two years later being champions of what was the Premier uh, Division One the year before it turned to Premier League. Um, then we've done some stuff with Leeds Rhinos. They had sort of their greatest team in their history. Um, they won the treble in 2015, so we did the story of that. And then for the last, um, well, I say for the last, with lockdown, it knocks everything out. But basically for two years, <laughs> we were filming with the current Leeds United team as well. Um, so when Bielsa was appointed as the, the head coach of Leeds United, we started filming our Fly on the Wall series, um, which is an Amazon Prime series as well. Um, uh, that one, yeah, two years long. So sort of episode, that was more episodic, Fly on the Wall filming things as and when it happens um so yeah take us home was the was probably the thing that uh the most recent football project for us and then yeah since since last year um this ranger 72 that's been our sort of main football project for the for the last 12 months so yeah we've we've done a lot of sports stuff but they're the kind of big headline projects that everybody's sort of heard of or watched or whatever yeah so, I mean, based in Leeds, of course, and the, the, the Leeds sort of centred uh, uh, films already, Lee, what, what sort of attracted you to make a uh, make a film about Rangers? Well, there was a, a couple of things, really, that we were, we were not done with football, but we were like, we've done a lot of football. And we, we, we were also in Berlin filming a, a show over there with Hertha Berlin as well, because we knew we'd sort of, not completed Leeds, but we'd done the greatest Rhinos team. We'd done the the Bielsa era of Leeds United. Um, and it was like, right, the, to do another football story, it has to be something that is, you know, really special and um something that gets gets the juices flowing because we'd done we'd done quite a lot already. And anyway, this this um this project was bought to us by a, a Rangers fanatic who was like, you know, I, we knew the headlines already of like the the, the cup win because I, I lived in Barcelona for um three years as well. So you know you sort of hear football folklore around around stuff like this and I knew that it was something that Rangers fans sang a lot about and what have you. But as far as the sort of details of the story, um the the Rangers fanatic that we know, a guy called Cameron, just sort of let us know then this happened, then this happened, then in this round this happened, then this happened. And we were just like jaw on the floor, like this is all in the same cup run. This is like the same the same season. All these things happen, and he was like, "Yeah, I know, I know that um, you sort of said you wanted to do something other than football next, but surely this is like interesting." And we were, you know, you take sort of a week or so to really think about it. Went away and did our own research, and we were like, "Yeah, we have to do this story. It's it's just." Um, not just because we we like the idea of doing something with Rangers just anyway, like that was interesting just because of the sheer size of the club and, and Glasgow's a really cool city that we're interested in stuff. 
it was like this is the story to do after that it was um it has everything that you would want in a story you know just whether it's football or whether it's hollywood whatever like it, it this story had all the right elements and then yeah and then it was a case of like well if we're going to do it how would we do it and that's when we made all the moves we needed to make but this was this was one that was brought to us of like you guys need to sort of do give this the city talking treatment kind of thing um and the more we looked into it the more we were like absolutely this suits us down to the ground this story yeah and i think that the fact as well uh lee i mean it's of course it's the 150th anniversary of the club and it's the 50th anniversary of the the achievement as well so it sort of ties in nicely you could say yeah and and that was like um pure luck really in terms of when we were we were wanting to do it we it was oh and by the way it's the 150 (laughs) oh and by the way it's 50 it's like almost like we kept looking at that these are signs that we must do it and we must do it now kind of thing yeah um but the (laughs) the the story itself was the was the thing that got us in and then the more that those kind of um you know uh, the stars aligned sort of thing it was like right we have to do it now we can't wait you know, even if we waited a year, we lose the 150 and the 50. So it was like, we have to just do it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And of course, I mean, supporters know about the teams that they beat en route to the, the final. But I guess that this film tells uh, a bit about the, the, the background, I guess, and, and different tales associated with, with each game, I'd imagine. Yeah. And, and, and also the sort of setup, really, of like, um, what was Glasgow like then? What was mm-hmm. What was Rangers where were rangers as a club at that point in time you know were they at a real high point were they at a low point were they were they rebuilding were they on the way you know all those type of things we explored as well of like uh, why does this story matter to the city yeah. and, and to ranger supporters and then once you get sort of in into the journey if you like through the cup um yeah it, it, we sort of tried to um because there's, there's too much right you could just you could do a film just on each tie by itself you know it's, there's that much going on um you could do a film just on the final and everything that went on at the final so for us it was like right what are the most interesting elements what can we get our hands on you know of course footage wise and and uh people to be interviewed and what have you so yeah each we sort of take each stage of the cup run and try to sort of explore a bit within that um you can't do everything of course but i feel like the film uh gives uh you know there's a different flavor to each round if you like so so hopefully we've pulled that off when people watch the vinyl version yeah and you've obviously got a a number of the players that were involved in 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 the run as well lee i'm sure the supporters will will love to see them recite their stories i'd imagine oh the the don't get me wrong, like tracking people down, making everybody kind of, uh, you know, lining up filming, all this sort of stuff. It's like herding cats a project like this. You know, you've got you've got probably 20 people who, um, you know, pinning them down at the same time, getting them to, you know, some people refreshing the memories a little bit as well of like what yeah. went on. I mean, you know, I can barely remember what's happened at the start of the pandemic versus like, you know, now these, these guys were talking like, 50 years so yeah the the we've got stellar cast i mean you've got the 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 players who were instrumental you know you've got john greg willie johnson colin steen you've got all of those guys are in it and then you've got the stories that uh you know that that were kind of the unexpected stories of that cup run Derek parlay and so on where where um they'll come in at a certain moment and 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 uh, drive something new in the story but yeah uh, uh, of the people that were available all the top boys are in there and and they're all on really good form as well definitely yeah then do you get a true sense as well i mean willie waddle of course left us uh, back in, in the 90s but do you get a true sense of just how important he was uh to the team and to the club back then yeah that i mean that's something that that right at the start of the project it's always a sort of open question really of like how would we handle Willie Waddle in this? Because we know, obviously, we know that we can't get anything new from him. It was more like, what? How can we tell his story? And you know, so critical to the film and and and, yeah. and the the careers of these players and and obviously everything that happened around Ibrox with the stadium. You know, he is critical to this overall story. So, so what we did is 
a little bit of um, what can we find out about what he said, when he said it. And then, um, again, another kind of aligning of the stars, we got hold of his sort of personal handwritten notes of, you know, tactics and booking hotels, <laughs> away games and this sort of thing. So we feel like as much as we could without him being here, he is in the film. You know, he's... he's is literally his notes are in the film, his quotes are in the film. Everybody talk, talks about him and what have you. So although he's, he's, he's not here, he's still a really important character in the film for sure. Yeah. And of course, uh, Tuesday uh, night, the, the premiere uh, of the film as well. You're heading up, Lee. Um, much you look, how much are you looking forward to that? It's, it's sure to be a, a right cracking occasion up there. Yeah, totally. The the premise is always like it's always a strange feeling from from like our <laughs> point of view at City Talking, where you're like you're half relieved because the film is done and you know it's like it represents like you know months of work and you know so many days filming and what have you. But then you also then get the other bit where you go, oh, people are going to see it now. Like this is uh, we hope it's good. And when you've seen something so many times, it's the same on like Take Us Home, Leeds United, and all those sort of things where you. Um, during the project you're going this is amazing this is amazing this is amazing and then at the end you go is it we've seen it so many times now like is this is this any good so i guess we'll know tomorrow but it should be a good night anyway loads of the the players are coming along and people from the club and press and you know everybody who's made the film and stuff so at the very least it should be like a real lovely moment to yeah, yeah to celebrate these guys i know they've had various other things going on but this is it's not usual, right, to like have a movie made about one of your big moments. So I'm hoping yeah. that the 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 players really enjoy it as well. That's that's sort of the, a sign of it being a good night for us is if they all uh, crying and happy at the end. <laughs> yeah, 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 certainly. And of course, you've got James Cosmo narrating as well. Uh, how big? A, how, how pleased are you to get to get him on board and 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 involved with this sort of project? Totally. Yeah, it was. Um, you never know of how again like getting calendars to align and that sort of yeah. thing and he was off filming another show in europe at the time um so he wasn't even even in the uk and um anyway we we giuseppe the director had an idea of um you know what he wanted for the opening of the film which you know people have seen a little bit of it in the trailer um and we sort of got in touch with him and just said look we think you're perfect for this like this is it needs somebody of his gravity and you know power and coolness and what have you to to pull it off and we've got a we sort of put pressure on ourselves we've got a real good track record of um every one of the films or series that we've done has got like some you know Vinnie Jones in the first one Matthew Lewis did Rhino's one Russell Crowe done the the last one so like we have to have somebody you know naming lights type thing and he was absolute gentleman uh, yeah. loved the idea, wanted to do it. Filming was dead easy. I mean, you see it in the trailer, like he was super into it. So yeah, that was um, one of those where you sort of, you you put a fishing line out there and hope that, that it comes off. And yeah, he did. So yeah, we were really, because you, you want that sort of star power as well in, in the film as, uh, to sort of give it that when it hits, when the trailer hits, everyone goes, oh, this is, you know, this is not just the, kind of DIY project that's you yeah. know quick. It's like this is serious. And uh yeah, he, he we were buzzing to get him on board. Yeah. Yeah. Well the snippets I've seen it looks absolutely tremendous. Um looks like it's, it's going to be a right good watch. Uh, uh, for, for folk maybe that, that uh, want to get, get a hold of it, Lee, how how would they go about doing so after after tomorrow night? So there's um sort of two two phases to this really. So there's I don't know, for want of a better term, I'd call it like the early access phase, which is now, yeah. um, where people can go on, order the Blu-ray, DVD. There's some real cool collectible stuff on there as well. We've got like these framed pennants, like the we've had them sort of, you know, beautifully embroidered pennants from the cup final itself, replicas of those that are signed by the players and stuff. But as uh, alongside that is, yeah, the Blu-ray and DVD and a book yeah. that we've, we've um, written alongside it. Um, so that's now that's like if people want to watch it in the next couple of weeks that's where to go to get it and then the digital release should be during May um, and we're just finalizing that at the moment so that'll be the the second way people can watch it um, 
but we're just finalizing the the details of that at the moment so i'd say early access get on the website and and order it and and watch it at home and then yeah there'll be a there'll be a digital announcement next month yeah fantastic so for you head along to uh, the city talking dot com folks for for all the details lee Hicken, it's been absolutely brilliant having you on thank you very much for that and enjoy your trip up to glasgow uh, tomorrow hope you hope you have a cracking old time let's hope it's a good week premier tomorrow night thursday european semi in germany uh, maybe it's written in the stars again for for this 50 years later let's let's yeah, hope so yeah. Fingers crossed and you'll have another film to make. <laughs> exactly. Someone else can make this one in 50 years from now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Lee. Cheers for that. No worries.